God bless you, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will, W-I-L-L, rejoice and be glad in it. This is Apostle Samuel Hendricks, a full gospel word of faith church, coming saying, and bringing greetings to you in the name of Jesus and encouraging you that the word of the Lord is your strength, is your power, is your help, your deliverance, your food, your sustaining, and your covering. The word of God is. It's your guide. It's your life. The word of God is. That's why you have to receive the word at all costs every time. And when he corrects us, rejoice that he loves us enough to correct us. The Bible said the, the Lord loved those who he correct, who he chasten. Why? Because he wanted to be perfect. He wanted to be whole like him. So it's a good thing to be like God. Somebody say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be like God. I don't want to be living like I'm holier than thou. You ain't living holier than thou. You can't live holier than thou. You can only live as, as what God gives you and what you're able to carry out with his help. Did I say it right? With his help. Because you can't do it without his help. You can't live a godly life without God. Because the devil looking for any soft spot in your life where he can take advantage of, but God cover those places as you surrender them to God. This July the 4th, 2021 of our Lord. If you like this video, be abreast of all the likes that's coming forth of these different videos. Let us know. Give us a word back. Let us know if you're uh, uh, enjoying and what this word means to you. We come to bring strength courage, blessing, cover, favor, deliverance, healing, resurrection, whatever the Lord want to do. It's God's word. He'll do what he want with it. The Bible just tell us to preach. Teach, preach, and edify, encourage, and then he'll do the rest. The Bible says signs follow the word. So the word has to go forth first in faith, believing, and God will do what he wants to do. So don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, whatever you're coming out of, whatever you're in the midst of, trust God. Call on his name. The Bible says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, shall be saved. So call and keep calling. Don't quit. And ask and keep asking. Don't stop. Don't let go of your faith in the midst of trial. Don't let go. If you don't see results, stop looking at results and look at his word because he brings results. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He will keep his word. He is a God that cannot lie. Have he not said it, he would do it. Have he not promised, he will bring it to pass. If he told you, it's going to happen. If he said it, and he did in his word, he'll make it good. You trust that bank you put your money in. You don't call them every day asking them, where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? You just trust. Now, you wait till a certain time to get some sort of report to see where you where your money stacks up. But you, you trust that establishment. And do you know they can close the doors and say they're insolvent? And guess where your money went? Insolvent. And you trust them. Not against banks, not against establishment. I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to compare where we put our trust in totally. We go to the doctor. They do their best to help you. They're human. They do their best. Some people really with all their heart love to help and see people recover and be healed. They know they're not the healer. They are the assistance of healing. They help your body. If your body cannot recover, all the medication and the help they do can do you no good. But they do their best to help you. And we applaud them who are on the front lines and in line, in every line, behind the lines that help people. All those who are in the system to help the mankind, they're doing, they're doing a job that God, God ordained them for. Even the people in law enforcement, those who are truly out there to do law enforcement and not using the job to, to be a murderer. <laughs> and I take it not back. If your heart is after God to serve God, you know you're called by God. You do that with a love for all humanity because you didn't choose humanity. You didn't create humanity. 
You just have to do your part where you are ordained to cover. My job is to love and tell everybody the truth, no matter what your skin color or what you like or, what you, or who you are. I'm speaking to the ones who God give me to speak to that will hear. He that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, let him hear. And if I tell you the truth and the truth helps you, you give God the glory and the praise. The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they give God the glory. And that's what I come to do, encourage you. I come to strengthen you. I don't want to weaken you. I want you to be strong. I want to be strong. And the only way I can be strong is to say what God tells me to say. Because he covers those who obey him. He doesn't cover people who compromise and do what they want to to please men. Now, I didn't say I want to make people mad and upset. I can't upset you if you're, if you're already there. I can try to help you and encourage you to bring you to peace. Bring peace. Peace is not allowing. If I see danger coming, just say, well, it's all's well. And I know different. I'm going to be charged for seeing something and not warning you and not giving you a chance to take cover. I, and I'm guess what? I'm hired to do this by God. I'm called by God. So I do what he tell me to do in love. You may not call it love, but, you know, when your father and mother correct you for something that you do, because uh, they won't correct you if they didn't train you. If they trained you and you know better and you get corrected, they're doing what's right. They love you because they don't want you to go in the right direction because you're going contrary. But if they never train you, there's no place for correction because you didn't know that you were wrong except what's inside of you. So I said all that to say, be encouraged today, beloved. Be strong. Be strong. A strong, a strong army goes through rigorous training. They go through rigorous training so they can be ready for an enemy. And you have an enemy. His name is Satan. And he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He hates you and your family. He hates everybody, a newborn baby. He can't stand that baby. You want to take him out. No matter where you are, he hates you. But God so loves you and the devil so hates you that God delivers you and bring you under him, bring you out of darkness. And that's a good thing. We ought to applaud Jesus today. We ought to say glory to God, to God today for being our good father and our help. Beloved, I'm going to give you a short word today. I say that as the Lord leads me. I kind of had a feeling to go all different ways today, but I'm just going to stick with one thing, one scripture that the Lord gave me. He gave it to me last Sunday, and I'm going to repeat it again. It's asking. When you ask God, don't stop. Don't ask like he ain't going to ask you and you have to beg him, but ask in confidence, trusting that he'll answer you. You know, that person or that establishment you go to that you've been always able to count on. You talk to them and you ask a question and you had confidence they were going to return it. Now, that's human. But when you ask the divine, you still have to have patience and wait. The Bible says, they that wait on the Lord, God will renew your strength. And waiting means you confidently know that God is going to answer. You know that. Nothing, nobody can tell you otherwise because you have hope in him. And hope makes you not to be ashamed because at the end of hoping, after faith first, then hoping, then God says you receive the reward after patience. We, we, we in a microwave uh, time when pe everything is a microwave, punch a button and it comes out in five seconds. Sometimes some things is coming and there's hindrance. The devil coming to try to hinder it. And he's fighting you. He can't stop God. So he tried to get you to stop believing because it said without faith, it's impossible to please God for they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently with all their heart, like you do with those studies at school, like you do with that business on at the job when you work, when you do a, why are you diligent? Because you want to do a good job. You want to do a commendable job. You want to do a right job where your faith has to be commendable that you, 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 you letting it out there before God and you're not taking it back. You're not going around and questioning and fearing. Fear is the dank, doubt and fear are two dangerous uh, opponents who come to get us to steal our joy and steal our confidence in God. If we're afraid and we and the enemy, we allow the enemy to say, well, but you do fear fear. I felt fear, 
but I refused to let fear have its way. I made my mind up. God is going to be the one. And if I have to stand alone, I'm going to stand by myself. But I know I'm not standing by myself. I've got God on my side. I got my family. I got other believers. God, I have people come to me that I haven't talked to in a while, that I have ministered to, that I've blessed, that I've encouraged. And without, without me telling them my situation, they come to me and minister to me. That is something that they come and speak to my heart to encourage me that your faith and your hope in God is not uh, not a, uh, something to give up or quit on because God is with you. And since God is with you, he is more than the whole world against you. So you have to be with God. If it seems like, and it seems like, I'm going to say this again, it seems like, so that you don't forget what I said, it seems like that it's just you and God. It's not just you and God. Got somebody else in the wings waiting to encourage you, to let you know. I heard your word. He said, because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word, every word what that God give you be established on the fact that he said it and he got testimony of people who will come and encourage you with the same word to build you up, to encourage you. Don't let sadness, grief, uh, seemingly lost. If you know what you have and you know it's in God, you hadn't lost it. Even a loved one. They're in God. They ain't lost. They're not with you right now. They're in your heart, but they're not with you. But you ain't you ain't lost them. The devil may use us to use the word we lost. We ain't, you didn't lose it. Something you lost, you don't know where it's at. But when you know where it is, I know it don't take the pain out of not having them there. That's, I know that. But guess what? God says he'll comfort your heart. He said, when my mother and my father forsake me, not necessarily they abandoning me, but have to leave. Or they could be a child, or they could be a, a grandparent, or it could be a friend, or a cousin, or a trusted loved one, a husband, or a wife. They didn't forsake you by intentionally leaving you. Something happened, and they're not there. God says he'll take you up. Take me up where? He'll, 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 he'll comfort you. Say, but I want the touch of a human who he'll send somebody human to come encourage you. And guess what? He'll let you know it's okay. I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm never going to leave you. Though you can't have the human element, I'm, I'm here. And I'll send people who has my heart for you to speak to you. Let's listen to the word of God. Come on, let's go here. In the book of Matthew, I said it last week. You heard me go, and I'm going over it again. Some lessons don't end after the amen is over with. There's another word out of it. So we want to draw all the juice out of it. And guess what? All the drawing out of the word of God, you will never exhaust the word of God. There's always something in that same scripture you heard last week or just, just the other day that God has some more resources to come out of there that bless you. If the word is so full and so strong, all your life, you'll never get all there is out of the word of God. But you'll get enough. You'll get what you need. The word of God is always complete to do what you can't do. It's always there. It's always there. Listen to what he said, Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, to him that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I've been to some places sometime and I had to go there with my assignment to go and I knocked on the door. Nobody seemed to answer. And I knocked on the door. Nobody answered. And I knocked a third time. I said this in my mind. If they don't answer the third time, I'm going I'm to leave. I knocked on the door. And, and it seemed like they didn't answer. Just at the end of that knock, when I knocked, and just at the end, when I said, time's up, I'm leaving, they answered the door. I had a friend of mine. One day I was at service, I mean, uh, at work. And while I'm at work, I'm, I'm going along. Because, see, before that day started good, God showed me in a dream, my friend. And God was dealing with me. So I got up and I prayed for my friend. And I went on to work. And I got to work. And 
while I was there, I was in my office and God began to talk to me and say, now call him now. And I said, God, he, he probably ain't hadn't gotten up to go to work yet. I'm, I'm going to call him at an inconvenient time. See, now I'm arguing with God. He didn't ask you to set this scenario. He just it says when he tell you to do something, that's the time to obey, not another time. Right then, when he tell you that. It may be inconvenient to you or for, it seemed to be for somebody else. That's the time of obey. That's when you get what God wants you to get, when it does not feel right. See, we can't go off of feelings. Feelings can deceive us. That, that's a big deception. If it feels good, it's good. Or if it's the right thing at the right, I think the right time is good. That's not, that's not the case with God. The time is when he says something. He always speak to you at a time, sometime. Now I say it all the time, but correct that. He'll speak to you at times when it seems very inconvenient. And it's not right. So I got up and out of my office. I went over to the other part of the building to get me a drink. I said, I'm going to get me a drink. And I need to drink something. I'm going to get up and go get me a drink to get this off my mind. And I'm there making ice and getting ready to get my drink. And God says, call him. I said, okay, I'm going to call him. Now I say, I'm, I'm going to call call because I'm going to get God. God bothering me about this. I'm going to get, now you, you have to pray for me. I'm not there yet. I know you love me and I know you think whatever you think and I praise God for you, whatever. But I'm I ain't I'm not there yet. I'm on my way. Maybe you there, since you are help me to come on up, okay? And I got my phone out and I said, I'm gonna call. In my mind, see that's why our mind has to be renewed. The Bible says, you know, uh, Romans, Romans the twelfth chapter. Romans the twelfth chapter. Right here, Romans 12 chapter. It says, okay, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies, the favors of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Why? Because your body is carnal, but your spirit is spirit, and your soul is in the middle of carnal and spirit, and your soul need to be leaned toward the spirit so that when God speaks to you, and how do you do that? By praying, seeking God, and when God speaks to you, obey God, because your, your, your soul, your body try to talk to your soul and says, uh, or your mind try to talk to your soul and says, uh, what, this, everything don't look right to do this. You have to ignore that and obey God anyway. Because see, you get the reward of obedience. Listen what it says here. By the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living, living sacrifice. See, you sacrifice to obey. When you obey, that's the sacrifice you're doing. When you do what God say, living sacrifice, holy. <laughs> what did I say? Holy. You're holy. Sometimes you don't feel holy. I don't feel holy sometimes. Guess what? I'm still holy. You know why I don't feel holy? My body don't feel holy. My mind thinking carnal thoughts. But my spirit inside of me, that's why you are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your carnal mind or your mind that uh, feels, uh, thinks, fears, uh, chooses, um, have passions of happiness, sadness. The soul, that's the earth, human earthly thinking. <clears throat> and, and, and then you have a, a body, which is all housed in. You have to have, see, to be on this earth, you have to have a body, a clay clay vessel. This vessel that you wash and bathe and put cologne on and dress up and do nice things to, it's just dirt. Sorry to bother you. Or sorry to hurt your feelings, but it's just dirt. You have to wash it. That's why you got to wash that thing, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> it's just dirt. I hope I didn't mess up your facade. Uh -uh. But anyway, so I'm calling a man saying, Okay, I'm gonna call. This may this will get God off my back. I'm gonna call. You say why you say that? I don't know. I told you I'm on my way. Are you on your way? Maybe you speak more different than I did. I'm just I'm thinking I'm gonna do this because my my corner man said go on and call. Go ahead. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. And if he doesn't answer, at least I at least I called him, huh? So I doubt. The phone ringing, one ringing, and while it's ringing. I'm praying in my mind, don't let him answer, don't let him answer. <laughs> Boy, look here, this thing, that's why you have 
to fast and pray. That's why you have to make this thing come under con uh, uh, control. You have to discipline your body because your body don't want to obey God. Your body want to do everything it want to do. Ooh, that house look nice. You got a beautiful house at home. I want another one of them. Why are you going to do, who are you going to live in two houses for? Is it a summer house? Nothing wrong with having a summer house. Go there and stay there and get a vacation away from your house. Did you need to, no, I see, then you get two houses. Oh, I see a third house I like. How many houses you going to live in? Huh? I got five cars. I think I want a, I want a six car. What for? How many can you drive at one time? See, the eye sees something and it lusts for that. It says, I got to have that or get me one of them. You don't need one of them. You got one. Be content. Bible says godliness with contentment bring, you know, godliness with contentment, godliness with contentment is great reward. Being content, being happy. Find a place to be happy. I didn't say, I didn't say you can't advance. I didn't say you can't do a little better. I'm just saying, when you have plenty and you're happy, or you got some and you're going forth, God can increase you. Okay, let's read this. It says, Therefore, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God ain't asked you to do something you can't do. Be not conformed to this world. Uh, the people you see on Hollywood today, I'm just making up a name. And people go through husbands and wives like I don't know what. Because, and it ain't everybody's fault. Sometimes it's the person's fault that's leaving and going somewhere else. They try, what are they trying to look for? You, you look for ultimate in God. And then on the earth, you have a mate that God give you. They not perfect. Guess what? Go look in the mirror. You're going to find the other person that ain't perfect. Everybody got to learn to work with each other. Thank you, lights. Thank you, angels. Thank you for being with us. It says conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You got to prove that. How you prove it? Doing what God say, obeying so now let's go back over here. I'm praying, don't let him answer. Don't let him. Now, God's not going to answer my prayer because he done told me to call him. Why would he contradict himself and then not answer the prayer because I don't want it? He has a purpose for me calling him. And I have a need to obey him because I don't even know what I'm going to say to him when I call him. He didn't tell me what to say. He just said, call him. See, when you obey, God can give you the answer to whatever it is you need. Obedience bring forth reward. Obedience is better sac better than sacrifice. Second ring, I'm saying, don't let him answer, don't let him answer, don't let him answer. The phone went to the third ring. I said, boy, he don't answer now. I know I'm calling it the wrong time. I'm bothering him. It was ringing, 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 ringing. It got to the last of that, that third ring and he answered, hello? I said, man, you've been on my heart and my mind this morning. God told me to call you. And that's that's true. I didn't lie. You say, did you tell him about you not wanting to call? Yeah, I I, I confessed on myself. I, I tell it on me. That's why the guys I deal with say, they don't, we don't like you, Sam. You're always telling it on yourself. We don't let us tell it on you. <laughs> he said, man... He said, I said, is everything okay? He said, now see, watch this. I'll tell you we, how we are being human. My friend answered me. He said, oh, everything's fine. Then he stopped at the end of that statement of being fine. He said, everything's fine. Let me tell you. One of my members called me this morning and told me they didn't want to commit suicide. That's hard for a pastor to have. That's hard. All men told me they want to commit suicide. And I said, God told me, he said, anytime God tell you to call me, that's what he said, you call me. So we prayed. We prayed about that. Then he told me about 
the place where they was holding service that there were people he had a condition where the people were fighting him about his place where he was having service we prayed about that too so we see it was a necessity for me to obey God when I called him So we have to obey when God, now it says, ask, when I, I've asked God, Lord, I want to be faithful. When you tell me to do something, I'll do it. When you say there's a need, I want to be obedient to it. Sometimes I don't understand some things. Sometimes I'm not, not necessarily in agreement with it, but I obey because I'm supposed to obey. Why you say, why you say you're not in agreement? Because I, I don't feel, there you go with feelings. I don't feel it's the, the right thing to do or whatever. You can't always go by your feeling. You have to go by your faith and by the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit of God in you will tell you where it's wrong or what you should say or what you should do. Because your flesh can tell you no. And God said, don't uh, do it. And then your flesh can say, let's do it. And God say, don't do that. Always obey God. So when you ask, ask God. And he'll, when you ask He'll be given to you. When you seek, you'll find. When you knock, it's open to you. And he says to everyone, everyone that asks us, receive it. Him that, that uh, seek us, find it. To him that knock, it shall be open. Listen, God will open unto you the treasures of heaven. He'll give to you the treasures of heaven. He'll give it to you. He'll give you the treasures of heaven. Listen. If you will obey God, obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, you read over there about sacrifice. Sacrifice of telling God yes and telling your flesh no. That's a good sacrifice. Sometimes fasting, you know, we need to do without. Turn the plate over. Seek God. Have a period, longer period that he tells you. A lunch, a breakfast, or a day. However, the Lord leads you to do that. And God give you strength and give you renewal. Weakens your flesh, but strengthens your spirit. Guess what? You're not going to die. Devil tell you you're going to die. Really? When the doctor tells you don't eat, don't drink anything, because we're going to take some blood work. You can do that. You don't think about dying. But when God tell you, the flesh say you're going to die. See how to see how he can lie to you. Your own self can lie to you. Make you be con contrary to God. You holy, and to live holy, you gotta believe. And when you believe and ask, show that you believe by asking, and believing. Asking faith, believing. One more scripture, and I'm going. Matt, uh, Mark eleven. Mark 11, 23, or rather start at 22. Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever, or whatsoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt. Don't doubt, don't doubt and don't fear. Don't doubt and don't fear. Say, how can I don't fear when it comes? Resist it. Resist it in the name. So I resist that in the name of Jesus. I had to do that. One time there was a meeting given, and we was thinking about people's head rolling. That means people being fired and job being changed. God told me to uh, pray. He told me to fast that morning, and I fast from that morning to noon. And I went out to my car during the time when we got the word that there was a, a decree coming down. This many years ago. And I'm out in my car seeking God. And God uh, gave me a scripture where it says, he laid in Zion. God did. What did he lay in Zion? A stone. What is a stone for? It's for a foundation. A sure foundation. Uh, a precious cornerstone. Whosoever con con continually believe and trust in that stone. What's that stone's name? Jesus shall not be terrorized or run in haste or run in terror or in, in, in fear. 
Because fear and doubt are two enemies to stop your believing. Even if fear comes, you re see you if you didn't have nothing to fight fear with, you would you would make it. I mean, you you could fail, but because you have something to fight fear with, what the word of God? God says He has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Not only that, He says, He says, and shall not doubt in his heart. Because I say this, if you doubt, fear is there. And if if, if 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 doubt is there, fear is there, and if fear is there, doubt is there. They they hang with each other. They run as twins. They hang around each other. You say, I felt fear. I know it's human. That's in this flesh we in. I'm not talking about I'm gonna stand out in front of a car and I ain't afraid of it hitting me. That's stupid. That's making you taking chances. That's that's tempting God. You don't go out there and do that. He didn't tell you to go out there in the middle of the road. If you got found yourself out there and the enemy tried to take you out, God can stop the thing. But if you went out tempting God, you put yourself in, in, in harm's way, and that wasn't God telling you to do that. That's different. Don't, don't play dumb games. But doubt, it's doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Don't doubt, don't fear, and you'll have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you got somebody that you're supposed to forgive, it don't care how bad they hurt you, forgive them. And don't talk about it no more. Don't give the devil any credence by you using your words to bring it back up again because now you stop the process of your faith working by bringing up the stuff that they did to you. You you be moaning and licking your wounds over what someone did. You giving the devil and that person credence by saying what it did to you because it's bringing up emotions. And instead of being a man where you can hear God, all you're doing is rehearsing what somebody else tried to do to destroy you. And the devil done his job because if he put the recording in your mind and he can push the button and play it at his will and not you resist and say, no, get out of here in the name of Jesus. I love that person. See, I can't love that person. That he, God said, love your enemy. Now, what what, what you going to do with that? If God said, love your enemy, what you going to do with that? You're going to say, if you say you can't, that means you ain't. That that don't mean you can't. If you see you say you can't when God say you can, see somebody's lying, and I know it ain't God. You just choosing not to. You choosing to resist him. I'm cho you choosing to relive a thing that God told you. I delivered you from that. I brought you from that. I, you overcame that. You overcame by the blood of the Lamb. God's the blood of Jesus, and by the word of your testimony that God brought you out. You didn't let that define you and let that haunt you and, and live and let it live in your life. You gone, life goes on and you're gonna drag it along. It's like holding a big bag of albatross it's around your neck or around your arm, your shoulder. You're just pulling this bag. It's getting heavy and heavy because you're holding this stuff. And the more you talk about the thing, the more you give it uh, life, it's it's getting bigger and bigger, and you dragging this thing. And guess what? When you drag something that's heavy, it's hard. It's, it, that thing ought to be carrying you. Now you decide to put it on your back and you're going to carry it. Now, see, it sounds like a joke. And somebody said, I don't believe all that. That's fine. Just, you know, devil, hey, he, he knows this, what saddle fits you. And he'll ride as long as you give him room. But when you say, like Jesus said, get the hints, Satan. When he come to tempt Jesus, he said, get the hints. What did he say to that? I got to say that to you so you can go. You got you to do what the Lord did. Say what he said. Speak to the devil. Tell him to flee. He will go. Fourth chapter of Luke, it says, And Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jerusalem, and was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Forty days and... It said, Forty days, tempted of the devil... And at the end of those days, he did eat nothing. And when he, and when they were ended, the days were ended of his fast. He'd come to the end of his fast. Afterward, he hungered, and the devil said to him, now he created the devil, but he didn't create him the devil. He created him Lucifer, son of the morning. He was an angel of worship. 
He decided he going to do, he used his will to disobey God. He didn't have the right to do that. You have a right to choose again, disobey God. But guess what? It's going to cost you to reject God. It costs him, but it's going to cost you. He didn't have the right. He usurped the, the, the desire to disobey God. And, and it says, and it says, and so he got kicked down. He got kicked out. And guess what? He became Lord over the earth by reason of Adam disobeying God, giving him rights. Adam had the rights to the land, but he gave rights to the devil by disobeying God and obeying the word of the devil. That's why you have to resist the devil when he comes. If you listen to me, you can deliver yourself. The devil says unto him, if you be the son of God. Well, see, now God never used if when he said, except when he said, if you obey me. If you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus answered said to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil take him up into a high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment's time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I give it, I will, I give it. See, he got a will. He just used it against God. And if thou therefore will worship me, that's what he wants. And guess what? Even if he turned the power over to Jesus, which he wasn't going to do, he wasn't going to give it over to Jesus. He was going to lend it to him and take it right back or let him use it, but not. But the devil would still hold the deed because he got it from uh, Adam and he wasn't letting mankind have it back if he could help it. But Jesus come to take that, that power away from him. And he said, and Jesus answered, said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou will worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. See, you have to tell the devil. I'm going to worship God. I'm not worshiping you. I worshiped you when I was in sin before I was saved. And I failed sometimes when I was in God. But I choose not to fail no more. And I I love God. See, yes, God knows our heart. People say, God knows my heart. Yes. Because you saying that, he also knows your deeds. If your heart is for him, you're going to follow God. You won't use the term, God knows my heart, so you continue can continue to do evil or to fail. He forgives us. That's why grace is there. But don't make a habit out of it. And he brought him into Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if you be the son of God, he's always, he knew Jesus was the son of God. He's just bringing that up to try to make Jesus doubt. And doubt would invite fear in. And doubt would cause his faith not to work. So Jesus worked by faith too. Listen, and they said unto him, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down from him. Why don't you jump off this building? He tried to do that to me. In my earlier part of my Christian walk, I'm seeking God and serving God. And I remember what he said to the Lord Jesus. He said, listen, if God's for you, why don't you jump off these stairs? And I said, and I've been fasting and seeking God. And I said, you're a lie, devil. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, he affected my flesh. But guess what? I didn't jump off the I didn't jump off the stairs. You know why? Because I'm not tempted. Listen, listen what? This is why I didn't. Cast yourself down from hence. For it is written. Now he even used the scriptures on it. So that's why you have to know the scriptures for yourself so you can resist them with the word. He's using the word to convince, to con you. You use the word to de defend yourself and cut him. Listen, it is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus answered and said unto him, It is written, He said, He said, Thou shalt not thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all his temptation, he departed from him for a season. He departed from him. That's what it do for you. You tell the devil, get away from him devil. I, see, you keep a clear mind. Your mind is cluttered. You can't think. People have done things to their self because they, they, they didn't get the word in their mind to keep their mind guarded. They went contrary to the word of God. They did evil stuff. They did wicked stuff. They did uh, stuff of all kinds of manner to cause 
harm to their self and to their family because they let the devil fill their head up. You, you can't afford to do that. You worried about your money in the bank. You better be concerned about your soul by keeping your soul being lost. You can't make a good choice. So you better cover your soul. You better fight for your soul. Your soul is the precious thing. What can you give in exchange for your soul? If somebody, the devil took your soul, what can you give to get it back? You ain't got nothing. That's your soul. God trusts you with your soul. Use your soul to love and obey God. Ask God. Keep on asking. You ask, ask, keep. And remember, you're holy. Consecrate. Keep yourself consecrated before God. Hello, somebody. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you because God loves you. And I love him because he loved me first. And guess what? I can't tell you nothing but what he said. I just got to tell you what he said. That's all. You know why? Because I want you to overcome. You are an overcomer. You know that's your name? That's one of your names, overcomer. It's not failure. That's why God don't take that. That's why we have to go get it right for God so we can keep it, keep up. Listen, ask and keep on that. You ask and you seem like you didn't get the answer, just trust God. Say, Lord, I believe you. Is there something in the way, something I'm doing that's hindering you when I ask? Be honest. It, you know, it couldn't be, it ain't just, it, it ain't never on God's side because our God is always right. Just come clean say, well, is it on me, Lord? Tell me. Don't be afraid to stand up and be a man or a woman and take your, say, yes, yeah, me. Okay, well, and he, he doesn't condemn you. He convict you so he can move you to righteousness. The devil condemn you because he don't want you. He despise you. He hates you. He want to destroy you. So he condemns you. When you judge something, judge it by faith so you can make a right decision and not walk around in condemnation. Come then and say what in Romans it says, it says, uh, I got to say it, 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 I got to say it. Romans 8 chapter, you must hear the word. There is right now, there is now, at this very moment while we're talking, before now, right now, and it'll be this way come tomorrow, Lord, that will allow us to be here. There is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Even things you've done in the past that you repented of, people want to hold that. You have to hold your ground. Let people talk. they like clouds. They're there in the sky. The wind comes. Guess what them clouds do? Move right along. And, and don't spend your time trying to defend yourself. Fall on the mercy of God and humility so God can fight for you. Because when he fight for you, he going to take the enemy out. But the law, but, but they, after the spirit, for the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus had made you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law is good, but our flesh was weak. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin and con he condemned sin in his flesh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The Bible says if we walk after the flesh, we shall die. That means a carnal mind. But if we walk in obedience to God, we will live. We will live eternal, uh, this life until it's time to go, and then we'll be with God forever. But if we just say, I'm going to do whatever I feel like, forget God. Forget that church stuff. I don't care what that preacher said to me. He ain't He ain't me. He don't know what I go through. And I don't want to go through this no more. So I'd just rather give in and give up. For Hey, for Christ I live. For Christ, for Christ I die. He, he lived for me and he died for me and he rose again. And he said, everybody that believes in him, you're going to suffer, but you ain't going to suffer forever. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. If you're going to reign with him, you got to suffer. Sometimes. Suffering ain't forever. Don't make it a clot of a badge of honor. I suffered. And when you suffer, 
Say, God, for you, I'll do anything. And guess what? He ain't going to never let you down. I love you, beloved. I love you today and I love you tomorrow. I love you. I love you because you are God's purpose. Keep on asking God. Lord, show me my purpose. Show me the way. Show me what you want me to do. Lord, I ask you to take care of my family. Take care of my loved one. Take care of my church. Take care of my business. Take care of my life. Heal my body. Deliver me. We, we get to where we stop asking God. We stop talking to God. We just assume. You can't. Uh, assumption is not faith. Assumption is going along on the basis of what you're doing. Faith is on the basis of what God said. And when you stand on that, he watches over his word to make it good in your life. But it has to be in your life for him to watch over it. If the word's not in your life, He's looking, but it's not there. When he come to see the character inside of you, he don't come to see who you are and what you did. He come to see Christ in you and what you allowed Christ to do through you. That's what he come for. And when he find Christ in you, and guess what? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father praying for you. He's saying, Father, that's my child. They serving me. They're obeying me. Cover them. He's praying for us. So he tells us to pray from earth to heaven so he can make it happen. Earth and heaven. Earth and heaven. The Bible says they meet each other. They kiss each other. What? What's in the midst? Mercy and kindness. Favor. They're beautiful. Beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. Beautiful are the ways of God. Beautiful is the Lord our Savior. Beautiful are you, beloved. Let God be glorified in your life. Don't stop asking. Don't stop believing. Seek God while he may be found. Call upon him while he may be near. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask now that you bless this word to the hearts of your people. Break fetters, chains, break hindrances, break mind blocks and fogs. Cause light and life and strength and refreshing to come in the spirit, souls, and bodies. Heal and deliver and set free. Make whole for your glory and honor. We give you the glory and praise today. We ask God that we've honored you. We, after we, we ask that we've emptied the bucket. We didn't leave anything undone or said. We pray that your name is glorified and you're honored and that the people's lives are blessed, the devil defeated, God exalted, and Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, is Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Till we meet again for Gospel Word Faith Apostle Samuel Hendricks. Love you. Bye-bye.